we are inching ever closer to the fabulous, the amazing, the much-anticipated kickoff to opening of this NFL season. But the preseason has to come and go first. And the second preseason game didn't see QB1 Justin Fields play against the Indianapolis Colts as the Bears fall to the Colts. But a huge revelation might have occurred in this second preseason game for the Chicago Bears. Have they found themselves a backup? Do we have a QB controversy in Chicago? But for the backup position, now that we've seen the truth, maybe, in Tyson Bajent, we will find out here on the Sports Cubicle. It's the marvelous one, Dan Marver. I'm Mike Mercado. And Marver, we saw Tyson go 9 for 10. He even saw that amazing play to the uh, on the outside for a touchdown. And Bajent, interestingly enough, I think played better than P.J. Walker, has played better than P.J. Walker. What did you see in the second preseason game between the Bears and the Colts? Not including what actually happened in the game, because I don't think that's there's much consequence when there's not so many starters playing. But the true story coming out of this is, did the Bears just develop a backup quarterback? They did. However, I have a theory about NFL preseason games now. The theory is they should not be played at all. <laughs> <laughs> they should almost do like college football and play non-conference games. I mean, I know the CFL is in season right now, so maybe that would work. So I don't know. Maybe they need to play one of those teams from the other weird leagues or something. Because that's what they should really do because they're entirely meaningless. I mean, I was rooting for Nathan Peterman myself. <laughs> but I mean, that was a nice dive by Bajan. I mean, I think that the second – hopefully we'll never have to worry about a second-string quarterback. That was my take on the game. You know, that hopefully that we'll never see a second-string quarterback. And I liked, I liked what I saw of of uh, the running game. I mean, that was good. I thought there was some, some – uh, you know, some show there. So I th there were some good things that came out of the game. I mean, the defense, it's hard to evaluate, obviously. I mean, so uh, I thought that all in all it was a decent performance, but it means nothing, unfortunately. So it's very hard to uh, evaluate a meaningless game. Uh, Roshan Johnson, I mean, he's the backup quarter, a uh, backup running back at Texas, and he may end up being the backup running back here now, too. So, you know, he looked pretty good. What did you think? So I'm on the camp that Nathan Peterman and that P.J. Walker were the initial targets for the backup position. Nathan Peterman being the kind of quarterback that can help you win a game in a tight situation, help you win a game if Justin Fields is missing a game or two because he's hurt with some rib injuries or hamstrings, whatever worst-case scenario may happen. I think P.J. Walker was kind of the idea of the same type of offense, the same type of tempo. But if you have it in this kid – in Tyson Bajent and you know whether or not you can evaluate anything truly for a preseason game I think you can see whether or not somebody's a baller or not whether or not their speed is able to keep up in the NFL and I think what's going to be interesting to see is did the Bears just find themselves a quarterback that they developed within themselves in a preseason and does this really signify that they're going to keep three quarterbacks for the roster, I think in today's NFL, you have to keep three QBs, especially if you have the prototype that is Justin Fields. If it's me, I'm going with Trevor Simeon, I'm going with Justin Fields, and I'm going with this kid, Beijing. If for another reason, we don't know what what he can be. You don't know if Justin Fields is gone for a significant amount of time. It doesn't matter who your quarterback is because you're not going to win any games. Nathan Peterman may be a professional quarterback, but he's not a professional quarterback who's going to help you win the NFC North. So if you do lose Justin Fields, it would be nice to see if you have a diamond in the rough in this kid. And it might just be preseason flair, but I think it's something to go down that avenue if you're going to keep three quarterbacks on this roster. I agree. I think I think they'll probably end up keeping three quarterbacks. Um, but uh, I guess they can do this thing now where they have a third quarterback on something like a taxi squad or whatever they call it now, and they, can, and they don't have to have them on the actual roster. They can have them in waiting. So. Although that maybe two would be enough, and then have the third guy sort of in waiting, that I think they would be good enough. But in terms of everything else, I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard to evaluate if you don't see Khalil Herbert, you know, and, and the other, in the rest of the gang. Although Jack Sandborn was there, and he's probably going to be first string, so that was good to see. So, um, um the quarterback position, you know, <laughs> I remember not long ago where there was quite a bit of controversy about second string, even Fields' first year. He started out as second string, so I, I like the I like the feel of this. Where first string is first string, 
and, and, and hopefully nothing else will ever be need to be discussed. I 100% agree with you. That is the goal, that it's only about QB1, number one, Justin Fields. But if you live in a universe where you have to have some insurance, I think having Nathan Peterman and then having maybe a lottery ticket in Tyson Bejent might be something that they want to hold on to and you want to avoid maybe putting him on a practice squad because the most value asset in the NFL is a quarterback under contract. And if you found one who is later in those drafts, that is something you want to hold on to like gold. We want to know your thoughts. We're all over the universe. We're on Twitter at SportsCubicleTV. For the Marvelous One, Dan Marver, I'm Mike Mercado.